Morning. The Australian Open is mired in controversy. A furious debate erupting over whether Novak Djokovic will take part in the big event. The world number one is officially listed to play at Melbourne Park. But the Victorian government is holding firm, saying all competitors must be fully vaccinated. Djokovic has repeatedly refused to reveal his vaccine status either way. Plenty to discuss with Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie and in Sydney 2GB's Chris Smith. Jackie, I'll go to you first. I mean, there's a, this is a hell of a game of chicken that's going on right now. A lot of talk about whether Djokovic will try to use a loophole to allow him to compete in Melbourne. What do you think about all of this? I don't know where the loophole comes from, but you're either double vaxxed or you're not. If you're not double vaxxed, I don't, like many other Australians out there, I don't give a stuff whether you're number one or not. You, the rules are you're either double vaxxed and you're coming in, and if you're not, you're not coming in. Pretty simple. I'd like to see you, you just knock on his time. door and just say <laughs> that. I'd like to see Jackie Lambie turn up, knock on the door and say, I don't care if you're double vaxxed or not, let's go. Send her in, Chris. What do you think about this? Do you think this is just a big charade that he's just going to play anyway and there's going to be a lot of people in Melbourne who will be pretty upset if he does? Yeah, look, if they give him an exemption, what is the exemption? What, the fact that he got COVID in 2020 and therefore he's somehow immune? Well, sorry, his immunity, because he's had COVID, is less than what he would have if he was vaccinated. I get the feeling that he doesn't want to show that, you know, the state's controlling him, but if he wants to play the world tennis circuit, and that includes the Australian open. He's got to be double vaxxed and I reckon he's actually got double vaxxed and he won't tell us about it. Really controversial there by Chris. I like that. Well, not surprisingly, we've asked everybody, we did a, an online poll exclusively on the Today Show polling here and it's really interesting. 60% say no. Novak Djokovic should not be allowed to play, while 39% say, yes, let him compete. Cheryl Smith says, no, we can't go to some shops, restaurants. Why should he be allowed to play? Vaccination is compulsory for him. Dave Jansen says, if he's COVID-free, what's the risk? Fran Higgins says she's tired of entitled sports people who cannot mm -hmm. follow the same rules as everyday hard-working folk, mirroring what you were just saying there, Jack. While Julianne Gunn comments, he's had COVID only months ago. His immunity is better than any vaccine as long as he provides a clear test before arrival. Sure. So keep your comments coming in there. But I think that's a really surprising look at that. Now, let's move on. Beijing has blasted back over our diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics, warning Australia will, quote, pay a price for the decision and that no one cares if we send our officials or not, Jackie. Are we playing a dangerous game with China here or is it true? No one cares. Uh I have to laugh because um, Senator Patrick and I brought up a motion last November to discuss this specific issue. The, both the major parties shut us down before we could even get started, mate. So I have to tell you now, those athletes, um, they're born athletes. They put a lot of um, effort into where they get to. A lot of them don't have sponsorship until they, they're at the very top. I can tell you what, I don't think the ath athletes give us stuff whether the diplomats are there either. Uh, that'll be the last thing on their mind. And I imagine that most Australians, all they care about is those athletes being over there, keeping safe, coming home safe and bringing home a whole bag of medals, mate. That's, That's what we're looking forward to. Apparently it's going to be our year in curling. The curling team is looking good, Chris. But <laughs> former Socceroo captain Craig Foster wrote in Sydney Morning Herald this morning saying Beijing 2022 is not a celebration of humanity. It's a celebration of crimes against Humanity. He's talking about the human rights issue that's happening there right now. What do you think about that? Well, the Olympic movement has been dominated by certain athletes who've felt that the country that is hosting the Games deserves a little bit of a touch-up in terms of a protest about how they've behaved. I would not be surprised that amongst all the nations that compete in Beijing, that someone delivers a message either at a press conference or even on the podium after they receive a medal. And what's China going to do about that then? Um, it'll be a really interesting thing. But if they think the politicians are the only individuals that will protest their abuses of human rights, they might have another thing coming. Yeah, they might have a bit of a shock on their hands. This could really blow up in their faces. Now, Jackie, the PM today is playing $1.3 billion into a scheme to boost homegrown manufacturing to, re to relieve our reliance on China. Is that going to be enough? I feel like we've shut all the factories here. Uh, well, we're in round one. I believe there was over 750 submissions put in, in David, and there was 34 pick from that. We're into round two. She's a real slow drip of the tap. It's not very encouraging at all. It would have been nice for them to really get on top of this, uh, you know, well over a year, two years ago, and they, I just don't think that they have 
you always know when elections coming up, don't you? Yeah. So let's see what round two delivers, mate. But, I, you know, there's a lot of businesses out there that are trying to be homegrown, trying to get, get moving. Um, they've been through really tough times and I just can't believe over 750 applicants, there was only just over 30 that were worthy in round one. I just don't believe that. It's hard, isn't it, Chris? I mean, we're so reliant on cheap products coming in from China, but, you know, I'm from the northern suburbs of Adelaide. There was the Holden factory there that really kept that area alive. That was shut down, you know, stupidly years ago. We could be making our own electric vehicles now. Yeah, the interesting thing about Holden and Ford is that we really couldn't compete with what was coming out of Thailand, China, Korea, etc. And we still can't, so we're going to have to face the reality that with China saying we will pay the price, that this means that we're going to have a supply chain problem for the foreseeable future, and it's back to the future. We do have to get these factories back up, we do have to pay a higher price for our goods, but we've got to start building and looking after ourselves and being dependent on ourselves and not so dependent on one nation, which is what we've done for 20 years now. Yeah, that's true. All right, quickly, let's talk about that extraordinary first day of the Ashes at the Gabba. A dream start for the new skipper, Pat Cummins, but a nightmare for the Poms all out before morning tea. Jackie, you've got to feel really bad for one Rory Burns. Out on the first bowl... I mean, that hasn't since 1936. That poor bloke, he can't go home. Where's he going to go? New Zealand? Should he just... <laughs> he's got to go somewhere. I don't know, mate, but I'll tell you something. You give us that test in Tasmania, we'll deliver to you more than what Pat Cullings has done <laughs> for Australia all the time he's been here, mate. There's... Guaranteed. We'll even put some lamb chops on the bar before you, mate, and some prawns. No worries. Plenty of whiskey, plenty of wine. <laughs> Send her down to Tasmania, mate. I'm, I'm really feeling the Tasmania's vibe on this one, Chris. I reckon yes. they should get it. But Pat Cummins has already been hailed as captain. Fantastic. It's going to be a tough day for him today, but I reckon they've got this. Well, it's only one innings, but it reminded me of 2006 and the old pommy Steve Harmison bowling the widest of wides in cricket history on the first ball of the Ashes series, and we killed them in that series. I reckon this could be the same omen. First ball, what a ball, and then Pat Cummings tops it off with five wickets. You can't get a greater dream start than that for the new skipper. Go, Pat. Go, Pat, indeed. And let's get those ashes down to Tassie. I think it's a good idea. Jack and Chris, always great to see you both. Take care. Thanks, David.